<laughs> Hi, this is LG Petrov and Ole Dahlstedt and you're on Vinyl Talk with Entombed AD. Have a great time and buy vinyls. Cheers! Have you noticed that uh, any difference, let's say, when it comes to vinyl, does it affect, let's say, your merch sales at all uh, as a touring guy? It's definitely more uh, demand on vinyl now than, uh, let's say, five or ten years ago. Yeah. I would say vinyls. Great. Yeah, you know, I, mean, I, I love But the feeling when you hold the record is like when you the sturdiness of it. That's not what you. You can't get the feeling from a CD you know, and stuff like that. You know, when you buy record records, they they, they take uh, space. You know, that's the only thing that's you know uh, the downside of it. It's because if you buy during during a tour, you know they're gonna break somehow. It's okay. Well, you see, you just beat me to a question because I was going to ask you: while you're on tour, do you buy records, or do you actually go record shopping at all? Our uh, our merch guy does. Uh, we go yeah, with him. Yeah, he does and, uh, that a lot. He goes to the vinyls and stores and stuff, and it's like, oh, look at what I found. But then you, that urge to, to find more stuff it just continues. You know, you can't have everything at once. If it comes too lightly, you, you will eventually get bored. Like we're gonna fly back, and it's it's too much weight to bring back a bunch of uh, vinyls. Like in Europe, the the, the vinyl, how do you call it? Vinyl, vinyl fairs. Yes, vinyl. vinyl fair. The exhibitions yes. are, are coming back strong, strong. They have it in Sweden every month, and there's like ten thousand people there. And you can sometimes there 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 are people selling stuff, but they don't know what they have. So you can really make you know, like a, yeah, they got a treasure. Yes, the European festivals. There's always uh, a vinyl stand wherever you go. As, as bands, as touring bands, when you find. You collect records or do you collect not music? Anymore, no. Not anymore. Not anymore. The Spotify came along is like oh you get uh, you get lazy. You get lazy. Yeah, it, 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 it's sad but that's the way it is somehow, you know. In this time and age now when there's so many bands, so many records and it gets lost. In this uh, yeah, I understand. whirlpool of music. You well, know. So, so then you tend to to go back to your uh, the safety of the classics. You know, you, you rather, rather do that. You know, yep. uh, memory of you know that first thing. That whether it be a record, the first record, maybe the first song or the first show that you watched that made you kind of never decide that that's it. That's that's what I want to do. I want to be a musician. For me, that was uh, like early. It was almost preschool when I heard Kiss the first time. I was like, I was sold, you know, or bought. I don't know. <laughs> and then uh, I remember my brother came home with a like a tape with a Highway to Hell, and I have never, had never heard anything like it. I was six, seven years old or something. I was I was a little bit of a late bloomer. My my mother took me down to uh, the, the center where. We lived there, okay. and then she bought me the, 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 for, uh, the another perfect day with Motorhead. <laughs> and then uh, Kim Wilde, actually. That was the second one. Kids in America. Second, yes, the second one was that. <laughs> so what I bought was uh, a sex record. I was out for... for which <laughs> one? Uh, I was out for, to buy For Those About the Rock, which was just released. And I was, it was uh, gone, you know, it was out. They sold out of it, and I was like, "Oh, this looks good too." I've heard about Saxon, you know. Like, I bought that Who's instead. The and, yeah, <laughs> strong arm of the law. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember, let's say, your first rock star moment? <laughs> you got a lot of them every day, man. <laughs> now, nah, when we when we played with the uh, we toured with Slayer and Armada, that was like a Okay, we've done this. We can quit now. <laughs> but then we've toured with Motorhead and, and you know, 
basically touring is the same whatever band you tour with. You know, but it's good to play uh, in front of different people, like like Eamon Omar. They have some of us, some of them know us, but some of them, some of them don't have a clue who we are. So that's just a challenge. I like it. You can always learn something. Yeah, yeah. From others, mm -hmm. like in, when we tour in Europe, especially. Uh, there's a lot of people uh, giving us uh, demos, CDs, you know, <laughs> but uh, you know, demos of their bands. It's like, oh, have a listen. And then, so after a tour in Europe, we have you know, like a stack of this height with demos, and that's cool. When the bands give you, when the bands send you their demos, or let's say when a fan comes to you and gives you a demo CD, yeah. you take the time to listen to them. Yes, yes, that's very nice. Yes. I wouldn't say that. that 100 percent uh, every time okay but i mean i mean if we would uh, get a get a demo or something just put it on have a listen to it and party to it you know if it's bad you know you, you and you tell them you're honest you know this is bad but keep on doing <laughs> what you're doing you know and if it's good